All right, guys, so we're gonna go into the culling in workflow process and discuss the details, show you guys how it works. And this is really our preferred workflow process because we found it to be much more efficient than any other process. All right, so we have our same catalog. Hopefully you guys are working in your own catalog as an example. We've gone and we've reset everything. So we've removed all the flags from the previous tutorial. We've gone back to our basic default standard import presets and let's get started. So with the calling in workflow process, what we're doing now is we're selecting all of our images and we're rejecting them first. So I'm gonna hit Control A or Command A on a Mac. We're gonna hit X to reject every single photo and that way everything is rejected. And now what we're doing is we're gonna go into our loop view uh, just by double clicking or hitting E and we're just gonna go through the images quickly and we're gonna select images that we wanna keep by hitting P. Now we're not worrying about any developing, all we're doing is just going from image to image and just selecting which ones we wanna actually keep. And so the great part about this is that we're splitting up the develop and the culling process into two completely separate components. And so that way we can focus on each. So when we're culling, all we're worrying about is if we actually wanna deliver an image, and when we're developing, we're just worrying about batch processing and developing our entire gig. Okay, so you can see how fast we're moving from image to image in the loop view. We can also do our same culling process from the thumbnail view. And what I like to do is actually increase the size of my thumbnails and then remove the left and right panels as well as the top and bottom panels by hitting shift tab. Uh, and then all we're gonna do is just go through and, and basically select the keepers. And so I can use the mouse to sit here and navigate. And if you guys are kind of worried about, well, what if I can't tell if it's sharp or not? Well, you're gonna know when you're actually going through and developing. And when you're developing, you can always you know click the filter to show all the images and select a different image that you might think is sharper. Uh, for the most part, if we kind of go to our large thumbnail view, we should be able to tell if it's sharp or not, at least to a certain extent, when you click on it and you look at the preview. And then we'll know in detail, you know, once we actually zoom in and we're developing. So you can either use this calling in workflow from the grid view or from the loop view, but either way, it's a, it's a great way to just basically focus in on just calling rather than having to focus on anything else. And you notice that we're only hitting one button. We're just hitting flag every time we see something that we want to keep. Now for everybody out there, this is the system that I'd recommend you all use. You'll still benefit from using uh, programmable keyboards such as RPG keys, but it's not necessary. You can still get very quick speeds and our clock speeds of 1500 to 1600 images per hour was done simply with just a keyboard and a mouse. So this is the actual system that we're gonna be using throughout the DVD. All right guys, let's go on to the next video.